so that's the first thing you want to do. So I, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you 95% commitment on this. I don't know why they wouldn't be able to let us have a couple. Um, but that should take care of the access problem with regards to um, the computer. The one thing that Robin mentioned briefly, and I want to make sure that you guys all understand this, I will go through each of your computers and on the home screen, I will put a little shortcut. So instead of having to go to SSD Life, all you have to do is click on that shortcut. It will take you to SSD Life, so you will have to use your information to enter into it, but it'll take you straight to the form, okay? Right. The other thing I want to tell you about that is this. I will also put on the laptop a URL, a shortcut to a video on how to complete the form. The video takes about 15 to 20 minutes, but it goes into exact detail about what's going to happen when the form is clicked on and who gets what. It was what was presented to the administrators and the principals. So they saw that, so they know that it's stuff that you don't need to know, but it's good to know, okay? I would also like to point out that once that email, uh, just to clarify something, when you do this, my suggestion, this is me, this is her, I'm going to follow this one. We can still have this printed off so that when you are on the bus and something happens, you can just fill it out while you're there, fresh in your mind. And then you come back and just input it. If it's something that is dire, and put it right away. If it's something that's just kind of FYI, you, you know you have some time. I would also say that from a teacher point, I listened to what you guys are saying over there about safety, and my heart hurts for you because I'm gay. I have said there's some safety issues that are caused by a lack of response. But as I said in our two meetings earlier, each one of you heard me when we talked about the antecedents. I know what teachers think. If you don't fill that out completely, they won't pay attention to it. Some teachers aren't going to pay attention to it anyway. But I'm with you and it sucks. But the problem is that the issue is this. What this provides us with is online data. Anybody can pull this up. I pulled it up. I pulled it up before we came here and I told you guys earlier that when I pulled it up, I saw some, uh, instances where it was working. Things were actually solved. The teacher got back and put some information in there. She met with the driver. It doesn't happen enough. But I also said to you that I saw a majority, at least half, that were not completely filled out. A teacher cannot solve a behavior if she doesn't understand what's happening before the behavior. I know you've heard me say this a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred times more. If they choose not to act on it at all, okay, let's say they finally get tired. The principal finally gets sick of emails coming to his thing, so he goes to the teacher. The first thing she's going to say is, well, it's not even filled out, so they really don't care. I, that is what they are going to say if they don't want to do their job. They're going to put the blame on somebody else. But what I can say is this, it's filled out accurately. It's not my problem, it's yours. All right? And so that's all I'm here to support is to make sure that if there is a problem, it's not our problem. We did what was asked of us, and that's all I can do. Are they ready to open it? Yes. What happens, and we're kind of getting ahead, I will answer that real quickly for you. There is, Robin said, when you, again, when you fill it out, you have to submit, it goes directly to Robin's email. It won't move until Robin acts on it. Robin has a choice of sending it to the teacher. Well, she actually has four choices, I believe. One choice is, to do nothing. It's really not a behavioral concern, it's just an FYI, because some of you use this form as an FYI. She just has that in the collection for data for later on. 
Another one is, she will meet with you. She just, she'll meet with you. And then close out the form. That form remains active until somebody closes it out. The third option is, she sends the form to the case manager. When you put the kid's name in, if you spelled it right, and you gave the school, it will pull up the case manager that's in the system. Now, I know this is going to be hard to believe, but sometimes special has the wrong information. In it. Yeah, that's a problem. And they are working on that problem. All our systems are not one system. It's five different major systems with an SSP. We have an IP system. We have our routing system. We have our paid system. And they don't communicate. And so when somebody moves or a kid comes in, they don't change the teacher right away. So the teacher may not be the accurate one. But what happens is this. If the teacher doesn't get back, Robin has the chance of going in and clicking and sending it straight to the administrator of the school. Depending on the severity of the issue, Robin might just send it to the administrator anyway. So really this comes down to Robin's judgment on is it severe enough, is it important enough. And I will also say this, this school is one thing if not data driven. What I like about this is it's CYA, cover your assets. I mean, I also say that a lot of people get away with a lot of things. But when it comes down to my integrity, like if there's a problem, I don't, you're not coming to me. You're not coming to me and saying it's my fault. I filled this out correctly. Here are 17 online forms that I filled out, and not one of them has been responded to by the teacher. And then I'm done. So the issue doesn't lie with me. And that's what I want to make sure is that the issue doesn't lie with you guys. And that's why I keep talking about this. Um, I, I, you know, it is what it is. It's going to be on your desktop and you'll enter it. The other thing I offer is this. I'm thinking that we probably do 10 to 15 a day at most. So the opportunity for you to put it in is going to be quickly. And it should maybe take you, probably take you three to five minutes tops. It's not a long process. But again, the importance is in the detail. And you have a question right now, I'm sorry. Gets it. Now, that's why Robin said, you know, it has to all come to me. So at the end of the day, she has to sit there and go through all of them and send them for the video and make a decision about it. So, and so I will offer this to you as well. Off the top of my head, I have to sit down and play with it, but I know, listen, this is important to you. If you are the initiator of the form, you can go in and check it at any time to see who's moved on. So let's say you haven't heard of me in three days, and you go to the form and you pull it out, but lo and behold, Robin's had it on her desk for three days. So we know who the issue is with here, so you can go and talk to Robin. Or, it's been sent to the teacher. The teacher has this amount of time. She inputs what she did on there. I did this, I did that, I talked to her, I talked to him. So, I don't have a lot of time, I'm, I have another job now too. So, if I feel like you have to be right up, then I'll write up. But what makes it so that it might not be important to her, but it is important to me, what gives her that decision to decide if it goes further What are you trying to bring me in a hot spot for? <laughs> What's her judgment? And, and that's something you'll have to talk to her about. This is what I would offer to you is, if you give a form that's half filled out, you'll get a half filled out response. If you fill it out and you get great detail, and there's something seriously urgent, you can write it in there. This is urgent. 
Just put it right there in capital letters and then give the detail. My thinking is that might provide a little bit more attention to it, but again, I can't speak for what Robin sees as important or not. She might think it's more of a driver issue because of the way it's written up, and if it's not written up the right way, it might look like a driver issue. Good question, though. One more. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So the teachers who want to work with you will work with you, even if you don't have the NOC to build out. But I will guarantee you that it makes their job so much easier. And at the end of the day, they might make a decision whether they try to, to fix it or not. I'm exhausted. I had 20 kids just beat the crap out of me. I don't have time to look at a piece of paper that's not filled out by me. So the question was, if I forget to fill something out, will it not accept it? The only thing I think on that is it won't accept it if you didn't fill out the top one. Um, when you fill out the top, good, good questions. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Here we go. So, SSD Life is where you'll find the form. If you clicked on Division, it went down to Business Financing, and then go down to Transportation, and you clicked on it. But you don't have to do this. This will be on your hard top already, or on the, on the drive. Uh, transportation is right there. I'm going to click on Transportation Incident Form, and just click on it. And lo and behold, here it is. Let me just give you a couple points because I I promised that we'd try to get out here a little early. And I personally think that you guys have the ability to do this. You all have seen this forever. I think the frustration is you have to do it. Because there's not the supply, the support's not there to do it well. Yeah. And I personally said I will make sure about getting you some more laptops at your places. Yeah. Talk the route. That will solve the majority of your problem. Once you're here, it's pretty darn easy. The problem is this. There's a couple things you will need to know. You need to know the correct spelling of the child's name. If his name is Bob, and you call him Bob, but in the system it's really Robert, you need to put Robert. So you'll have to check your sheets to get the study. Because here it is. Uh, let me see if this works. No, no. Go on. Right there. The um, student name is really important. The other thing that there's a couple things that are important. This system works on the student information. This baby right here is the biggest important piece of it all. Student ID. We can't get you a list of all the students because you're not allowed to have access to that information. If you don't service a kid, you shouldn't know he has a disability. It's a uh, free and appropriate thing. So, this is what you do. You fill out this piece right here, the, um, the drive, uh, the student name, the district, and the school, and it will pull the rest of that information up. It will pull the case manager up, okay? The one thing I offer you is this. The driver, your name is in the system. So everybody should be able to find it. Your, your aid is in the system. Doesn't matter who's filling it out, the driver or the aid. If you both have, if you have both people on the bus, put them both in there. What if there's a sub? If there's a sub, the sub should be working with the aid. If there's no aid, the sub should be talking to the dispatch to help them. If there's a sub and she doesn't know how to do this, she should use a hard copy, fill it out, and give it to the dispatch. That is a jury decision. Robin, did you hear that? If there's a sub with no aid and they fill out an incident form, they'll turn that incident form into the dispatch and they'll put that in because the sub won't know how to do this. And unless you're a full time sub. Oh, she said it all the time. Okay. Look, let me, let me ask this. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to have a problem with this. If there's an issue, dispatch has been doing it enough, they can, they can give you a one-on-one. -on -one. They'll tell you how to get it done. Okay? So, we have a great dispatch team. Uh, the monitors, the student name, the district, the school, and that'll bring up the case manager. Oh, let me see how to do this. The second thing that you'll need to figure out as you go through it is a setting an event. The sensory issue is in there. This is not a complete uh, breakdown of everything that's out there. There's a spot for other. You can type it in there. If it won't fit in there, do it in the narrative piece down below. The more information that is relevant to the behavior, the better response you're going to get in support. You're going to identify what the problem. 
you're going to identify what the problem behavior is. Now, this is where your guys' intelligence comes into play again. He's physically acting out, and while he's doing it, he's shouting. Okay, what came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken. I don't know. But the issue is this. If you, if he wasn't physically acting out, would he still be shouting? Was it the shouting that started the physical piece? You're going to identify the, first, the main behavior, the one that started you first. All right? You might want to put a one or two or just write it down below. He started screaming first, and then he started, and then five minutes later, he started physically acting out. The way the teacher knows that, it was a screaming that happened first, and if I could stop that from happening, then the child probably will physically act out. Oh, an injury? I don't think you are. I think an injury is separate. I don't know anything about an injury anymore. But that might be part of your descriptor. You know, he fell. But for the most part, this is about behavior. Okay? So again, make sure that you're identifying the behavior that happened first. The teacher might come in and try to give you some ideas about uh, his physically acting out. Well, he won't physically act out if he's not screaming. Correct? He didn't do anything when he screamed. So now I'm going to start hitting. What's that? I've had a student get on the bus screaming, just yelling, ah, and grab my hair. Okay. So, what do you think happened before she got on the bus? Because she's screaming as she got on the bus. Uh, are you a or driver? Driver. Nobody. That's a problem. So I would like that. So you're in a scene it was, he came to the bus in a crisis situation. Now this is Jerry 101. Listen to what I'm saying. According to district policy, a student in a crisis situation has to be de-escalated. And, the, and the, this is what I'm writing. I'm writing this in here. According to district policy, a student in a crisis situation has to be de-escalated. Teacher slash aide brought him to the bus and left him here, creating an unsafe environment. Now, that's different than saying he came here Christ, man. Oh, no. I'm putting this all in your people. I'm telling you the details. It's all in the details. You have identified that the teacher broke district policy. Now, the principal, when he gets that, or the teacher is going to respond quicker than you would if you just said they brought him out and nobody did it. I'm gonna I'm going to start I'm going to start uh, what's the word? I'm starting to quote, I'm gonna start quoting district policy. This is district policy they're breaking. I know that, so I'm gonna write that in there. So when stuff comes down the line, I'm gonna say, look, I wrote it right here. They're breaking district policy. This is on them. So that's a good way to take better notes, to make better things. Because you're saying, you are not following district policy. You drop them here in a critical situation. Our, our um, uh, what is it? The nonviolent crisis intervention tells us they have to be de escalated And you didn't do it. Yes, ma'am. That extends to all our students. All students serviced by SSD fall under our guidelines. Okay? If a student is brought to you in crisis, we have our nonviolent crisis intervention. And there are those five areas. And the other one is after a crisis, you have to de-escalate the kid. Now, the issue is this. So listen to me closely. If this is a child that's being brought to your, your bus in crisis every day, then there's, there should be a plan around that. This is not for kids that have this behavior every day and that's showing you that that's how they are. This is for kids that do it once a month, once a week, three times a month. 
It's for those behaviors that are popping up that you're not getting any support. Once a week, twice a week. It's something that is outside of the ordinary world, okay? So we talked a little bit about the importance of the behavior. And what is your immediate reaction? It's important to know what you did. What you said to the student, it's all important, so you want to capture that. This is your opportunity to shine, guys. You have used the vocabulary. You're saying this is what you did. It's all on you. What next? You go down here where you say uh, submit. Once it gets submitted, if you have that, um, if you have a, I mean, color copy, the color copy is nice because on the back is exactly what is what you is what you don't see. Once you get submitted, it goes to all these other places. The first thing it does, it goes to um, a transportation office. It actually goes there first, and that's where she starts clicking that information. And then it goes to bus support. What was the follow-up? The teacher has to input follow-up if it goes to the teacher. You guys understand that? If it's clicked, if Robin clicks send to teacher, they have to give follow-up or it stays open. Now this is my answer to you guys. I might look at this and say, this gives me a PIA, pain in my asset. For two weeks, I've done four writings, I've heard nothing. I would go in there and take a look at them and say, she's not done a darn thing. I would write up one more time and say, wow, no comments have been made, I'm giving no support. I need this for, to uh, alleviate crisis. She will then forward it to the administrator, okay? So, I am good at any last minute questions about this. You see me all the time. If you have questions that you need support with, I will help you with this, okay? But for the most part, can we safely move on, except for one? Yes. Yeah. Right. Years before this, the secretary put in the computer, and we counted on this to be emailed or something to the school. It wasn't going to the person who's most responsible, and that's the case manager. If we were leaving this up, actually what I understood is when they filled this out, it went to the school secretary, and she would pass it on. Guess what? Not happening. So this way, when you fill out this, it bypasses everybody on that end except for the administrator and the teacher. So this is a clear way of making sure the people who need to know are in the know. Alright? Can we wrap it up? Are we good? Alright, good. The last thing we have to do is this. The wellness committee put together a uh, little slide. Oh wait. Yeah, right? Slide? What? Yep, slide. The Wellness Committee, give me five more minutes, guys. I promised you. Here we go. Here we go. Are we ready? After this, we're going to have a couple closing remarks, and then we are out in a battle. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Oh shoot, this is not going to be good. Okay, here we go. Guys, this is insane. I, I will tell you too. Okay, this is kind of funny to me. Um, they have uh, the Wellness Committee has these pencils, they're cushy, they're stressy thing, you know? And we were, they were like, oh, should we give it out at the beginning? And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I'm not getting hit by one of the little pencils. And I'm like, we need to at the end. And I know I will throw them around, so they're going to hand those out to you. 
This is from our SEC Wellness Committee. I think. Prescription dental, vision, life insurance, accidental death and dismemberment, dependent life insurance, long-term disability, wellness programs, and an employee assistance program. All of the lines of coverage just.